Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Jay Ascar and today we're going to be showing you guys how we made our latest song, Control. Of course, we wish Nat James was with us right now, but it's only us, Jay Ascar and Tony. Uh, Tony came from his town to actually re record a ton of content and this is one of the content that we created together. As the title says, today we're going to show you guys exactly how we made the song. Um, we're going to go into the project, we're going to show you some of the details that went into creating it. And if we find a chance of showing you guys like a couple tips about it, then we'll go through it. So, okay, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so basically uh, with this song, um, what happened is I was at Jay's house and he actually went to the bathroom and he was like, hey, you can go ahead and use my computer. So I did and I started messing around with some, some quick sounds in Serum. Yeah. And when he came back, it was this sound actually and we started going from there so i don't know if you want to uh, basically at yeah, the starting point of the song was a rolling bass right mm -hmm. it was sort of a rolling bass and it sounded something like this now it is not exactly the same thing because i i had some sort of drums from another song and he started working on top of them with this rolling bass and when i got out i was like bro you got something and he was like what do you mean? I'm just doing like something Some like random stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He thought it was random, <laughs> but to me it was golden. You know, if you guys didn't know, Tony and I have made a couple songs together before. Yeah. Um, he used to have another alias, which used to be Hill Filter. But what happened? So basically, with Hill Filter, I you know just felt stuck in a way, and I started this new project just called Tony and this is going to be the first song that we're going to be releasing together. But yeah, we did a few songs. Uh, we yeah. did Sins. I don't know if you guys know that one. We also did Falling. And yeah, we're really, really pumped for this one. I really think you guys are going to enjoy this one a lot. Yeah, I think it's, it's a very interesting one. Now, this one's more aggressive than we usually release. Mm. Like even him or I. But it's sort of a good mixture of yeah. what we do. You know, it sort of like speaks itself. Now, all of the sounds that we used were like, we're all from scratch. Making sounds from scratch gives you the opportunity of like, it's good to use presets. But in this case, this song is completely us. Not only because we made it, but also because we created the sounds ourselves. Yes, having good presets is important. But I think being able to exactly create something that you want to create, it's so valuable. Something very important from our song. Now, yes, the song started with this. And like, what do you do with it, right? Like, how do you go around it? Um, I created a sort of stab afterwards that I don't know exactly like how to call it, but it's a sort of like, like it's a sort of like a crazy piano. I would call it like that. Mm -hmm. Again, this was created from scratch. So now when you play it, it sounds like this. But then we were like, bro, this sounds good. And we were repeating this over and over again. Like we were repeating this again and again. And we we're like, bro, what else should we do? Definitely. And we try to automate pitch bend. Um, if we remove it, it sounds very dull. But it sounds like this. And th I remember this. This it was mm -hmm. actually like this at the beginning. Yeah, it there, was. There like were that. no automations. Also, some interesting things that we did. We did automate the release of the the sound. Mm -hmm. So that would be um, the DK. kind of right. The, the DK of it. And I think that would be a cool tip for you guys. Would be to try you know automating random stuff because yeah. if you take that off, it really sounds like some static. Uh, you know, just a static song. Uh, but with that automation, it just completely changes the flow of it. All we did was basically automate this. If we play the song, you'll see this moving. It's, it goes up towards the end of the first rolling bass. You can see it here. It's moving up and what that's sort of creating a, a, an open space for something bigger to happen, right? And there's something very important. And, and it's when we started creating this, I was like, bro, I really like this. I think it sounds sick, but we need to add something melodic as always. If you've ever seen any of our songs, we're all about melodies. We're all about melodies. Right? That's really, really the most important thing. And I was like, what if we try to make a an ARP with this shit? 
Like how would an art would sound, right? And I remember trying and trying and trying and trying shit. We were actually, as we were producing it, we were changing the sound design as we as mm. we were going through, like changing wave tables, trying different stuff, adding more DK, more de- like we were trying so much stuff. But it's interesting to say this because it's as if the sound design was being created as we were doing, the, as we were producing forward, the song. Yeah. Like it was, it wasn't like we created a good sound and it's just stuck with us. No, as the song was evolving, we were evolving the sound itself. It was, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Now, the melody, uh, let me show you exactly how it looks. It's literally an ARP. It's literally an ARP. Now we added sort of a sort of um, um, a progression. If you look at the bass, the bass is like. This is how it sounds. Now, we added the arp on top as if it was a sort of like a chord being arpeggiated or something. It sounds like this. Yeah, and that sounds so good. And it's also, I guess, something that you guys can grab um, from it, you know, is the fact that you can go ahead and like, I guess most producers wouldn't like play around with the the higher notes uh, and, and bass sounds, but exactly. in this case we went like we went like okay let's let's just do it you know like, yeah and it, it actually came out something really sick. Also, I think what really makes the difference it would be the drums mm. uh, that goes with it because it does add a, a certain flow to it. So if you hear here. Those little tumps definitely accentuate some part of it, some parts of it, and it really, really helps. I mean, if you listen to these drums by themselves, mm-hmm. they sound like you're making 2000s house music. This is like the thumb is so like yeah. it even sounds like a like an intro of a David Guetta song. I don't remember yeah, exactly which does. one, but there's one that has exactly this. And basically, the drums are this. Very, very simple, but very, very very, like tight and effective. Yeah. There's something extra that I also, I'm also noticing like the DK, I mean, the, yeah, the DK automation that we created, it goes through how, throughout the whole song. Like, it's not like we created one automation and we just duplicated that, duplicated that. I mean, no, over here, you can see that the DK is going up, down, and then it goes up again and then down. Like, it's not even on time. Like, I would normally create an automation half note, you know, like here. Not all the way there. It's weird. Mm. It's even like offbeat. You know, the automation is offbeat. There's something. There's also another thing that we added to the sounds to make them more interesting, and that was reverb. If you can see, there's actually an automation for an endless smile, which is creating reverb. And instead of just creating like whoops, some most of the times we also created spaces, like places on the melody or arp where we knew we wanted a ton of reverb. Mm. So like if you play this, if you can see it's like doo 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 and it opens up and then it closes up and then it opens. It's 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 crazy. Yeah, yeah that's a lot of movement to the sound. Exactly, it, exactly. It makes it feel alive, you know, in a way. Yeah. So it definitely, definitely helps. If you look at it, the song is very basic. Mm. Let's be honest. It's a very basic idea, but adding small details to make it move, it's what makes it very, very important. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. That's where the key is at. Like, make Definitely. the best out of whatever you have. Yeah, this this were the like background sounds, I guess. And it's just you know, it just adds a lot of character to the stabs. So I guess that's something you can guys try and do. Like, add some random sounds to your stabs, and it can really add a lot of character and make them more unique. Yeah, um, the sound design is started to turn into a sort of vocal. When I was creating it, and we were like, "Like, wh- why would you use this, right? <laughs> right?" But if you put them together, it just takes it to another level. Now, the sound itself isn't that cool. It's it's actually a layer of different sounds. Let me show it to you, because we didn't quite go through it. Mm. If you play it, it, sounds like this: pretty basic sound. Now, without a layer, it sounds like this. It's really, the, the sub bass adds so much as well. And when you play everything together, if you remove this, actually, it's not as effective. Mm-hmm. 
instead of just it, it 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 makes it so aggressive. Yeah, it makes it so unique. It, it really adds a lot of character to it. And yeah, it, it's definitely some some of those things that you uh, can definitely go ahead and try. Like just add random sounds. Like it literally doesn't really matter. Um, it will add a lot of character, and uh, you know all of your sounds will sound just um, a ton more unique. And you know that's one of those little things. Yeah. Now there's 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 something I gotta say as well. Like if you want to make your sounds stand out. There is a thing that we created, a thing that we did actually. The main sound is actually being accompanied or being helped out by a lot of white noise. Mm. And I'm not talking about this white noise in the back. We will get to that. There's actually another white noise that I'm talking about. And if we play this by itself, there are some specific labels, I mean, layers that are really helping out the main sound. And that is we have a perk. Sounds like this. I don't know. It's just creating something. Mm -hmm. And then we got this one as well. When you play these alone without the sub or the main sound, it sounds like this. If you listen to it close enough as well, there is an automation clip happening to that on the pitch, which is weird because nothing else has been mm. pitch automated there. But it's just the idea there is was it was to create a sort of like a riser type of feel. Like the song, it's always dragging you into something. It's always creating a sort of like tension. And I guess like adding the kind of like um, aspects that you add to a buildup can really help out. Uh, pitch automation, reverb automation type of things you do on buildups. Now, let's play it again. If we play this, the main sound by itself, it's ugly. It's very ugly. It's really, really empty. Like if you actually hear it, it just sounds like a weird ass percussion. But if you just add those two other layers, it just makes it sound like an actual lead. So it's crazy. The and power now, of white noise. Yeah, together with the together with the sub. Put that together with a white noise that is just like shh, it sounds so good. So much energy. It just yeah, it just makes it much much bigger. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess we were we we kept on playing. Um, we were actually repeating when we first made this. We were repeating this arp over and over again. Mm. And I I was like, bro, I need to make something else. And I was like, bro, we're already changing shit. And I was like, we must do something else. Definitely. And we tried and tried and tried and tried and ended up with this melody. It's a sort of reply to the other question. Definitely. It's like, again, as, as, I've, as I've always said on my videos, it's always like a question answer, Definitely. question answer type of thing. It's always like, what is this trying to, trying to question? I don't know, but this is the answer. And then it asks another question. And then it gets another reply, right? If you even look at it as if it was an actual conversation, it's like, it sounds like someone is being, someone's okay. insisting something. It's like the last reply is like telling them like, it just it's stop like, it, man. stop. Like, <laughs> right. yeah. if, and if you think about it, it sounds like I already told you what's happening. Yeah, right? I, I don't know. Definitely. To me, it's like, I, I always think about music in weird ways. And this is one of the ways that I think about it. Now, for the transition, there's something very interesting mm. here. We created yeah, a sound true. that sounds like so basic. Listen to it. It's such a basic sound. Definitely. It's yeah. such a basic sound. There's small bits of other notes there. And it's like, why are they there? And mm. it's like, we're just creating movement to it. And it has a ton of glide, a ton of portamento. And that's what's helping it out. I don't know what this is. So let's play this. Oh, that was Ooh, the first idea. That was the first, was the first uh, idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's cool. It's not surprising anymore. Mm. And that's the thing about adding new sounds. It's like, oh. What is this? You mm. know? Because people really love this transition. Yeah. People definitely. I've showed this to is like, bro, what is that sound? It just it changes cool. everything. Yeah. You know? Now, something important. Remember I said it was very useful to create your own sounds. Mm. And one of the… Here's another example. Like, the one of the reasons why I'm saying this is because you can create coherence throughout the whole song. 
if you no. create your own sounds, all of the sounds are going to have a sort of signature sound yeah. that it's not going to go away because you made it. Even if you try to make a sound that doesn't sound like you, it will sound like you because you have the same um, process of creating them. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like we created everything from scratch. So mm. it, we ended up having a result that sounds coherent. And it's also super helpful because when you create your sounds, like you know what amount of release you want, you know what amount of attack. And you know, it can lead to a lot of interesting you know, experiments, but like what we did with the automations, like the fact that we're doing this from scratch really gives us, it, well, it gave us a lot of space, you know, to, uh, you know, just do random stuff and experiment and, you know, you get something like this. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely cool to, you know, start working on your own sounds because it can lead you to places you, you wouldn't think of, you know? Exactly. Oh, yeah. So also uh, what we did here, it's after we have this last feel over here, you know, those small, small uh, fake drops really add a lot of, um, just a lot of movement to the to the song. And, you know, in this case, we just did a uh, pitch automation to it. Just went up. Now, there's something, there's something interesting about this as well. Like, not only is it a fake drop, which means you add a kick, you remove sidechain mm. from a part, and then you let it drop again. It's like, or like the notes are actually one, two, three notes up. It's as if it's playing a minor chord. And I didn't change the sub. I only changed the main sound. Like if you play it. If I put it back down as if it was supposed to, it sounds like this. Exactly the same as what we had before. And I was like, bro, I want to keep the same energy, the same idea. I don't want to add. I was trying to add a sort of like ARP, different ARP. But it was just too hectic. So adding three notes up, it made a change. And it's crazy because so most of the times people have the rules of creating a sound and adding a sub, but the sub always following the sound. Mm. And that is a good idea, but it's like, don't limit yourself. Yeah, just experiment. Yeah. yeah this sounded way experiment better. Shit. Like just do random stuff that you normally wouldn't. Yeah. And, you know, you can come up with some really interesting stuff. We we broke a lot of rules on this yeah, song, and yeah. that was one of the one of them. Like, the main sound and the sub are not playing the same notes. Mm. They're playing the same rhythm, which is important. They're not playing the same rhythm, yeah. same notes. And from there, like, all we added was like more drums. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we went through the this white noise, but this white noise is literally just repeating. Anytime there's any bass, we have a. a white noise and yeah. it's just it just creates so much energy like Definitely. let me play the song without any white noise mm. without any extra white noise oh. it sounds so empty you know it sounds good but it, it you know it, it just has that feeling that we need something else and, yeah and very important like it is following the bass line and everything it's not playing all the time which can be very tiring you don't want to like listen to it and be like, bro, I don't want to listen to this anymore because it has too much. Like mm. it has enough because it's playing only when the drums, I mean, only when the synths are playing. All right. So now we explain to you guys the drop and you know what's next. Of course, we're going to talk about the breakdown and the breakdown is very simple. It includes only three layers of sounds. One of them being an 808. Sounds like this. It sounds, it, it sort of sounds like it's a bit um, kind of out moving, of tune, yeah. out of tune, sort of moving, but we used Flex. Yeah. Why? Because I have FL Studio Full Producer Edition and I have all the libraries and everything. So we use this because it's useful and it why sounds not? good. Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> then we created a sound. Um, again, as we were saying before, most of this song sounds like it's talking. Yeah. Like the bump, it sort of sounds like vocal. So I told him, Let's create a sound that sounds like a sort of vocal, like something formant. Mm. And we did. And we also, as you guys have seen our music before, <laughs> we like like mystical type of things. Yeah. So we created chords that sound like this. Sounds super cool. Such a good melody. Yeah. 
when you when you put the 808 it sounds like this again remember when i told you guys it was useful to not follow the same melody as something else well there's another tip like try to create different rhythms with layers in this case yes a sub is a sub and a chord is a chord but they're working together and in this case we created a sort of like rhythm at the end of the a triad rhythm at the end of the bass line which created more groove to everything um and they do go together like it, it is the same note as it should be around here playing together with the uh, chords but it's not it's adding more rhythm right and these go together with the drums as well if we remove the filter and we remove the reverb look how it sounds so static and it sounds cool mm -hmm. but it's not as big definitely and it's not as interesting definitely. now when we add the reverb okay it gave more space it's like sort of like moving it and then when we add the filter It's just like a complete different story. It's sort of like you bring it to life, you know, like adding all these movements to the sound. And, and you know, guys, like that's the thing. You you can just go ahead and put LFOs on random stuff. Like you literally have no rules in this. Yeah. Like every little detail, every little knob you can go ahead and automate and you'll create something unique. So the again, remember what I said. When you create all of the sounds yourself, you can create coherence. And I feel like this song not only has coherence, but it also has um, uniqueness. And uniqueness is very important. Like, mm. Of course, you don't want to go outside of the box too much because then it's like, what the fuck is this sound? <laughs> yeah. Right? But if you play around with the standards, then you can create something very right. special. Mm. Um, again, like as a producer, I guess you want streams, but you also want to make sure that as an artist, as a real art person, You want to make something that goes beyond what everyone else is making. Um, so like whenever someone's listening to your song, I'm sure you want your song to actually affect them in other ways. Not not just the, uh, this shit's cool, but something like, holy shit, bro. This is impacting me in a way that can change my life yeah. completely. Like it's crazy, but mm. a small changes like this can create a change. Definitely. Especially, like, if you think about your favorite song, I'm pretty sure whenever you think about your favorite song, you think about a specific sound from it. I'm pretty sure yeah. that nobody else has ever used in that way before. Mm -hmm. It can be a bass guitar used as something, but the way you use things are very important. Definitely. I don't know. That's just food for thought. Mm -hmm. After that, what did we do? We added awesome. drums. Mm-hmm. You know, and something funny about the drums, I guess, it's like a lot of these drums are not in tempo. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it, they're out of the grid. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that really adds a lot of character to it, you know? Like yes. the fact that it's not always hitting on the grid. It, it makes it less static, you know? It makes it a bit more human in a way. And, you know, it, it just adds so much to it. So if we take a listen to the drums here with the metronome, actually, you will hear that it's not completely on. on uh... They sound sick. Yeah. You know, and just small like, listen to this. Like this. Yeah, it's a little like drag. Mm. Shout out to Decap. We used one of his yep. sounds, but <laughs> we cut them up. Like it's mm -hmm. not the same thing. Like we created our own rhythm based on what we had for the for the chords. Now we actually created a sidechain with just volume automation, and it's actually a volume automation inside an EQ. <laughs> That's what I, I mean. We were working so fast that it was like like bro, let's just automate the fucking EQ, the volume of it. That's what it's like like. Mm. <laughs> Like I've said, we, we broke a lot of rules. Yeah. Like I didn't want to automate the mixer volume because then it's like it's like messes it up. Mm, yeah. I didn't want to add any other plugin because I was pretty, I don't know, lazy. Mm -hmm. And that's what it, we did basically. We added another snare as well. 
It's just adding space. And we also added a ton of ambiences. Mm. So this is this one, of, one of them. And it's not doing anything. It's just holding the note of the actual song. Yeah, and just puts you in a uh, sort of uh, such a interesting space, you know, like hearing this on its own, it's it's so mystical. And it, it, yeah. it just goes uh, along with the chords. Like you want to go ahead and grab elements that sort of relate to what you're doing. And when you're hearing this, you're just hearing something really mystical going on. And it adds so much. Yep. We added a ton of them. We mm. added some ambience of, a, of a, like a sandstorm. Mm. We can barely hear it because it's so low in volume. Yep. But it's there. Um, and then we also created, I'm pretty sure we have some other things like a pad. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, also, something that we did is we exported some stuff from the Analog Lab. Um, mm. You know, it's like some analog pads to, to add. And yeah, it just adds uh, some beautiful ambience to it. Can barely hear this. Mm. It sounds so good, bro. Yeah. This is like meditation music. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. We added a sweep down, sweep up, of course. We added a whip. Very, very basic. Yep. Then when you, of course, include like subs going down, like doom. It just creates more tension and yep. nowadays I feel like build ups are not very important. Mm. Like I don't I feel like they're unnecessary nowadays because nobody really likes to listen to a build up by itself. I don't know. <laughs> to me, I would go like I would go like this if it was on me. Like actually, I mean if my computer didn't die, of course, like it would make sense, you know? But yeah. like playing the breakdown and just going straight to the drop. Mm. To me, that would make sense. Definitely. Now, um, the bu the breakdown is basically a deconstruction of the breakdown. I mean, the buildup, it's a deconstruction of the breakdown. So like only playing the first chords. And it's also a deconstruction of the drop because we're only playing the part that has like an arp, like a melody. Mm. Sounds like this. I also created like a reverse sound for the export. Watch this. Sounds like this. Of course, has no sub. Then we added a reverse on this. Sounds like this. Remember, this is a build-up. So it's building up. Mm. And all of the sounds are building up in small spaces, right? But they're still building up. And that was the idea for this. Like, pretty basic shit. Now, what else is there? The vocals. Mm. Don't think I forgot about my man's Nat James. Shout out Nat, Nat James, you know. He fucking killed it, bro. Yeah. I, I remember... <laughs> I remember we finished this track in like a day. Yeah, we actually did. It was from 7 a.m. I remember you woke me up at like 7 a.m. And we went uh, started working on the drop. And we finished up by like 4 or 5 p.m. Something yeah. like that. Like non-stop. Just, yeah, like non-stop. Non-stop. Yeah. Non-stop. Such a good flow. Yeah. Now, uh, the song was finished without instruments. I mean, without vocals. And he went home. He had to go home. And I was like, bro, uh, I'm going to get a vocalist. And we did. We got such a good vocalist, um, which was Nat James. He sent me… Like, bro, the first demo he sent us… It was already sick. Yeah. We were like, bro, we got to run with this, right? Yeah. And we did. Uh, we ran with it. Like, we we didn't even ask him for any changes or anything. Like, it was just as good as it was. Uh, Vocal-wise, I'm not going to go too much into detail. I can go into detail in another video. Like, explaining to you guys exactly what we did. Um, Mixing-wise, for another video. But for now, it's basically a ton of… A ton of wave, Waves plugins. Like Vocal Rider, NS1, Rbox, EQ, Compression, Deesser, Saturator. Um, one thing that I can tell you though is if you want your your vocals to sound crisp, add an Avi Road Saturator without any changes. Just literally open Avi Road Saturator and you'll see the difference. Wow, pure revelation season. Let me remove Avi Road Saturator. Sound. Feel like king of the hill, but boy, I don't need no crown. Yeah, that's so Don't much take pride, it's an ocean of lies and I might just drown. Then everything is going to a vocal out and everything has a ton of things. Like a lot of studio racks. Um, 
I have a DS or a CLA 76 to control everything. And all the vocals are basically going through the same route. Um, then we got ad libs. This ad libs have a ton of delay, a ton of, re of reverb, as you can see here. And when you play them together, it sounds like this. Night boy. Wow. Your revelation season. I heard this perfect sound. Yeah. Feel like king. Get a hill, but boy, I don't need no crown. I computer is dying right now, but it's because, I mean, waves are yeah. crazy. There, there's too many waves. And right now we're using a really good uh, studio, but. Uh, yeah, it's not enough even mm. even for us. <laughs> um, yeah, the doubles basically have a doubler. I mean, just going through the important aspects of it has a doubler to make it sound more double, right? More wide. Then for the ad libs, I I added a vintage chorus. Very interesting. It's a plugin inside of Studio. Mm, that's sick. And it sort of created a filter on it, which I wanted. And I'm sure I added other things. No, just a reverb. Manny Marroquin reverb, mm -hmm. really good one. Um, of course, our compressor, an EQ, and most of the EQs that I'm using is just to get rid of the lows and get rid of the highs. If it's not the main lead, you don't need a lot of highs. Right. If it's doubles, if it's like ad libs, yeah, just... if it's something in the background, remove the highs. That's my my idea. Like yeah. one of my tricks, just remove the highs, and that's pretty much it. Like this is looking done. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much for the master. I mean, just uh, so very, very like uh, the band stuff. You know, Sausage Fatner mm. and Fat Filter Pro L2, basically. Um, we were also using TRS five, um, and a lot of things like a compressor so, limiter, compressor, yeah. then an EQ, yeah. then another compressor, then a stealth limiter, and then a multi band limiter. I don't know why I'd use this, but I I. Did it because I wanted to, you know. But yeah. we can play it because it's too heavy. Like, it's too much yeah. for us, you know. But that's what we did. It's really sick. Yeah. For the second drop, it starts with a fake drop. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the ideas I first had in the beginning um, for the half of the first drop. And remember this part? Well, we, we put some steroids on that and it turned into this. Which is fucking crazy, bro. And what did we do here? Like, I have no clue. I just made a melody one octave higher and it just sounded good. Yep. I, I just trial and error. Like, if you would see me working, I would be like the same shit over and over again. <laughs> like, it would be crazy, bro. But this is initially or essentially what we did. And this part, the like this, this, doo -doo 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 -doo. we repeated that on the other half. Now with drums and it sounded really good. Yep. And that was pretty much it for the track. I, yeah, I guess it it was really you know just a poor, uh, powerful experience working on this. Like, I really hope you guys enjoy this song. Uh, let us know what you think. And yeah, I, I guess that's it for the, for this walkthrough. Yeah, that's it. Well, we hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, of course, we'll see you very soon. Um, if you haven't heard the song Control together with Nat James and Tony, make sure to go check it out. Link's going to be in the description. If you if you want to go check out Tony's um, social media or profiles, you can go check him out in the description. I think everything is Tony Music. Right? Yeah, it's pretty much yeah, just Tony Music. Tony Music, that's it. And I guess that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And we really hope you guys learned something from this. Because I, I think it was a good video. Yeah, I think it was a pretty good video. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting video. Like a um, lot of different techniques, you know. We've been recording stuff. for over an hour. So it's going to take some time to edit. But it's going to be a good video. <laughs> it is going to be a good video. It's going to be a very good video. Yep. So, yeah. See you guys. See you guys very soon. Bye-bye.